Call her my name, say it like that, baby, one more time Send me that text, baby, confess, I'ma hit your line Ain't no more stress, let it all go when I'm up inside I'ma get my keys, take you up, let you ride When you're not by my side, I let the day go Never be out your mind, come and get close Grip on your thighs, the stress I release Like yes, baby, please, like yes, baby, please What's up all you cool cats and kittens? <laughs> no, no, we're not gonna start it with that. We're not gonna start with that. Show and tell time. I have this thing from a long time ago. My girlfriend gets pissed about it. <laughs> At my local Applebee's, it closed down a long time ago and they were selling all the pictures they had hung up and you could just bid whatever you wanted. So I just bid five bucks and then I won this. Now that's a car you don't roast. You don't roast this car. 2G clips from Applebee's, best cheese out of 10. So welcome to the third episode of Driver's Driver Home Edition. Wheels, tires, suspension, feministries.com. Don't forget, go get wheels, tires, and suspension. Sometimes spaghetti, sometimes suspenders, mostly wheels, tires, suspension. Let's hop into it. All right, starting it off with the first car of the day, we have Logan with his 2014 Chevy Spark. I never in my life have seen a Chevy Spark modified. The Sonics, I feel like, are pushing it. The Spark? I don't know about all that. So let's check it out. Let's see what you got here. You got a bunch of pictures. Wheels, you have Vores VR7, 16 by eight plus 20, 16 by eight. What do they sell these for go-karts? Tires, General G-Max, uh, 195s. Stance is poke, no rub, no spacer, no trimming. How are you not rubbing? The tires stick out like an inch from your fender. That fitment's kind of bunk, brother. You better not go any more lower. You're gonna have some bashed up fenders. Okay, you got the like, hash marks on there, the fender stripes. I don't know about all that. I don't think any car needs fender stripes, let alone a Chevy Spark. You got a splitter on there. All right, 84 horsepower, 83 torque, and it's automatic. <laughs> auto <laughs> it's not manual. It is, I got the CVT, it's not manual. 84 horsepower and 83 torque. That's not even a spark. That's, a, that's just like a flicker, like a shimmer. The, what, how does this car even move out of its own way? Are you able to pass people on the highway? Or do you just get stuck behind some? No, everyone's stuck behind you. I'm pretty sure that's what happens. Yeah, this thing looks like a bugger rolling down the road. I'd probably give this any new rating system. I'm running out of cheeses. I give this car 53 boogers out of a snotty nose. Tip. Don't put fender stripes on your car. Nobody likes those anymore. It doesn't make it look cool. Nobody likes that. Don't do it. Quit putting fender stripes on your cars. All right, moving on to the next car today. We got Jensen Lickie. He has a 1998 Subaru Legacy Wagoon lowered on Raceline coilovers with Raceline 126 wheels, 17 by seven and a half plus 40-ish. You don't even know your offset, brother? You emailed to get your car roasted, you don't even know what. No spacers, 21540 tires. Exhaust is just a muffler delete. Recently swapped an Outback front bumper. Hood scoop is from an SG Forester. This is just like Frankenstein Subaru over here. You just took all the parts from other Subarus and tried to put on your Subaru, that's weird. Cheap car with cheap mods, got that. All right, so I see you got nice good old hood pins. Why you have hood pins on your car? There's two reasons. One reason you have hood pins One is because ring. your hood latch is broke and that was your best option. Two, you think it looks cool or mean or aggressive and it doesn't. It looks like your hood's broken and you just needed a Home Depot way out of it. Stance is decent. Overall, this looks like a car some 16 year old got. Didn't have money for mods, so he went to the junkyard, took anything off any other Subaru, slapped it together, and then just lowered it on the cheapest coilovers you could find. So, I'd probably rate this one piss-filled fog lights out of piss-filled headlights. Tip of the day, don't put hood pins on your car because you feel like it. You don't need hood pins and fender stripes. Everybody's like trying to build like muscle cars or something and you're just driving around a legacy. 
All right, and the next car we have is Sean's 2012 Camaro. This thing has a cammed LS3, all right? I know this term may be unfamiliar to you, but what it, that means is every single time this thing starts, beautiful little baby bald eagle is born wrapped in an American flag. I don't know about all that. For mods, he has Texas Speed Cam, like he said, ported in milled head, Circle D 3200 torque converter. That's right, it's auto because it's faster. That's I. Why is everybody's cars automatic nowadays? Cooks long tube headers with no catalytic converters, Borla, cat back, cold air intake, sick. Corbo seats and five point harness with a Braum hardness bar, headers, coilovers, strut tower brace, trailing arms, adjustable tow rods, polyurethane bushings on the whole rear end. Wheels purchased through you guys. Got the Forge Star F14s on there, 19 by nine and a half in the front, 18 by 18 by 10 plus 35 in the rear. Oh, so you can fit them Mickey Thompson street drag radials, brother. Big ass chassis mount wing by Street Faction, splitter and rocker extensions by Gorilla Splitters, and then stickers for all the sponsors I'll never have. All right, let's get into this. Oh boy. All those splitter rods on the front make me think of the, the girl from Finding Nemo with the fish bag and her braces. That's what that looks like. Your splitter shouldn't need that many support rods, brother. What do you have? Two self tappers in the back holding it on, and then you just is like, oh, shit, that's not enough. So you bought four support rods. Oh my God. And then you got the huge chassis mount wing this is like i feel like this is bumblebee if bumblebee came from the trailer park do you know what i mean an automatic camaro doesn't need a chassis mount wing on it or four front splitter rods forge stars they look all right on there went with the yellow and black theme bumblebee all these camaro guys you know how they be they gotta have the transformer car especially if you're buying a yellow camaro you gotta make it look like bumblebee because you watch transformers and you gotta let everybody know rockstar energy drink on the side and you're not sponsored by them so you just put that on you love drinking rockstar that much that you need a sticker on the side of your car brother this wing is freaking massive too holy shit. you better be making some serious power and putting down some serious lap times with this some you know what I'm saying? I don't know about all that, brother. That that wing on that Camaro. I'd take the wing off. Corbo seats look pretty decent in there. I'll give you that one. <laughs> Tip of the day on this Camaro is, first of all, don't buy an automatic Camaro, but that's a given. So don't put four splitter rods on the front of your splitter unless you're trying to make it look like your car has braces. Your car got a up grill with you. What are you doing? I'd rate this car Broken Optimus Prime toy out of Transformers 3. All right, moving on to the next car, we have that car guy. He's got a 2012 Malibu, a Malibu. Oh boy. Suspension, we got D2 racing coilovers for a freaking Saab 9.3. So he's doing a little customizing because uh, everyone's like, no, we don't need to make parts for the Malibu. Nobody in their mind would mod a Malibu. I'm glad you found a workaround. Thank you. Wheels, Altsor 084s, front 19 by eight and a half with a 215.35, rear with a 19 by nine and a half with a 225.35. Really need that staggered setup on your freaking Malibu. Nice, okay. And that's all you got done. Probably because you couldn't find any more Saab parts that would fit on this thing. I just wanna know your thought process. You went out, you're looking for cars, you wanna buy a car and you're like, yep, that's the one. Malibu, baby. That's what I wanna modify. I feel like this is what like the local librarian would drive and then all of a sudden had the urge to mod their car like they watched fast and furious and then they're like yeah i, I gotta do something to my car i gotta make it look decent and then you, you come out with a stanced malibu beautifully ruined front banner on there why do you say it's ruined you know it's ruined what else did you do to this thing beautifully ruined. i mean it's not that low it's not like it's like slammed or anything like that fitment's actually decent i'll give you that one fitment uh, wheels look decent on there. However, I just, I wouldn't mod a Malibu. What's the point? What's end goal of modding a Malibu? When you're putting groceries in the trunk, you see your fit menu, you're like, not bad. <laughs> Tip of the day, don't mod librarian cars. Don't get boring car. Get, get a car that's actually fun to drive, not Malibu. I'd rate this one Miami out of Florida, not Malibu. Next car, we have Leon Cruz. He has a 1998 Mitsubishi Chariot Grandis. Grandee? Oh God, another car I've never seen before. A legit JDM car imported from Japan in 2009 into the Philippines. Currently running stock springs. Wed Crans, uh, 17 by seven and a half wheels wrapped in Comforcer tires. 
What the hell? Currently misfiring due to lack of voltage output. Maybe you can meet up with that Chevy Spark guy and get your car fixed. Plan to set up with some Silver's coilovers. Oh, here we go with the plans. The plan. Just do it. Don't talk about it, be about it. All right, we have 18 by nine and a half with a mild stretch. It's a family car. It's something, brother. I gotta look at the pictures here. Also, considering it's a direct bolt-on for the 4G63T from a Gallant VR4, might consider swapping out that. Again, you're telling me the plans. I don't want to hear it unless you do it. If it's already in the car, tell me about it. Don't care about your plan. Nobody ever gets their plans done. Fun fact, in the Philippines, if your license plate starts with a B, it most likely means it came in illegally from Japan and was modified from right-hand drive to left-hand drive by sketchy mechanics. And I see your your license your license plate starts with a B. Uh, moving on, so this looks like if a Evo 7 mated with a minivan and nobody asked for that to ever happen. This is a weird ass car of all things you get the chance to import you import this weird ass minivan this looks like a car you can order directly off like wish.com or something like you can just go order a full-on car and this is what you end up getting this looks like a hot wheel that went wrong and somebody like made some magic juice poured it on it and it blew up to a regular size car i've seen some weird car this might take the cake this is like a minivan for a person that doesn't want a minivan it's like suv for a person that wants a minivan it's like an evo for a person that wants a minivan strange i'd rate this one weird hot wheel out of 10. <laughs> Tip of the day if you're gonna import a car import something cool no, no weird JDM vans. They got a lot of them, but just get something cool. Moving on to the last car of the day. We have Ryan Young with his 2001 Pontiac Aztec. As if driving an Aztec wasn't bad enough, I put some wheels on it. No clue which brand because uh, they were used and cheap. Amazon spike lug nuts, red grill LEDs, tinted taillights, straight piped. Unfortunately, I don't have any videos and the best thing of all, big old wang mounted on the trunk. Oh my God, we did it. I think we peaked. This is the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Pontiac Aztecs are probably one of the ugliest cars ever made. And then you decided to do ugly mods to it. What the hell? All right, let's look. You got the camp on the back the tent on the back so you can just live out of this thing because if you're driving one of these you probably don't have any money you got the night rider leds in the grill spike lugs and the wing what are you doing who bought this how did you get rid of this car you say you got rid of it after a year and a half of owning it how who I hope you parted it out. Otherwise it probably just went to the crusher. It went to the crusher after a year and a half of owning it as well as it should have because this thing's hideous. I would never want to see this on the road. This is absolutely terrible. The fact you spent any money on this is just a bad thought in my mind. I would rate this negative 100 out of all of everything we've rated. <laughs> Tip of the day. Don't buy a Pontiac Aztec at all. And don't mod it. If somehow your poor soul gets one, don't just figure out how to get rid of it. It's like a curse. Anyways, that's about wraps it up. So don't forget wheels, tires, suspension, fitmentindustries.com. If you want your car roasted, make sure to head over to our Instagram at Fitment Industries. Give us a follow and I'll make a post when we're looking for our next cars to be roasted. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to wash your hands, stay safe. Wheels, tires, suspension. Bye.